Let the Spirit of the Lord come down. Amen. May the Spirit of the Lord come down. In Jesus' name, let the Spirit of the Lord from heaven above. Let the Spirit of the Lord Neighbor, you shall be blessed. Say it again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the power of the Lord come down to take possession of our souls. The first reading you heard is taken from the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 55. As a matter of fact, the book of Isaiah, chapters 40 through 55, is what technically is called Ditro Isaiah, which means the second book of Isaiah. And the central message in all those chapters, what they communicate is consolation. They are regarded as book of consolation for the people of God. The portion we read today says that just as the rain comes down and waters the eat, any words that proceed from the mouth of God shall not return empty. What God has said about you shall come to fulfillment in Jesus' name. And the no powers of the eight, powers of the darkness can prevail against it. So that's the message. Dear people of God, today the people of the Israelites we are in exile in Babylon. And the, the prophet is trying to tell them that the time is coming when God will take you back to Judah. Where you will prosper again. Where you will have your liberty, freedom of the children of God. The power to live your life the way you want to live your life. In the light of the truth, not anyhow. So that's the message. 
Interestingly, if you go to that chapter, the first very verse, chapter 55, verse 1, it says, Come to the waters, all you who are thirsty. Come and drink, even without money. And that sounds strange. I doubt you can go to any bookshop or any store and request for a water without paying for it. So that immediately sends a signal to you that apparently what God is communicating to us may begin here, but ultimately it has to end in the kingdom of God. If you go down to verse 6, there you see when Isaiah started telling the people, call God when he still hear you. Call God when he will still hear you. And that makes me feel that calling God when he will still hear us, even though he was admonishing those in exile, that their restoration is fast approaching. But God still informed them to call God when he will still hear them. And he also asked them to repent of their sins. Now they still have opportunity. For if they are as wide as heaven is to the earth, so also God, the way God reasons is different from the way we reason. So I encourage you, if you go back, read the entire chapter 55. You see what cruelness in the passage read for us today. When he says, my word cannot be uttered without achieving the purpose for which it was sent. I would like you also to marry that with what St. Paul is saying today in the second reading when he talks about the entire creation is groaning inwardly seeking for freedom. That gives us a sense of people wallowing in suffering. This time not just human beings but entire creation so that the salvation is not meant for humans and humans alone but must extend to other creatures. Life, especially the Christian life, is not a bed of roses. So the central theme or message is perseverance. Perseverance. Very important. Steadfastness. So these people have been there for years, and they have been praying to God. They see Isaiah is telling them a time is coming when you will be restored to your own soil. And you have the liberty and the freedom you all along desired. But in that context, he was also telling them to amend their ways. Informing them or preparing them for something which is ultimate. I think it was Aristotle who said that every human action has some good element in it. So whatever you perform as a human being has a good attached to it. But we have varieties of goods. And they are classified. The lower goods cannot, if you are not careful, if you are myopic and defixated at the lower goods, that might prevent you from attaining the higher goods. And the ultimate good of every human person is eternity. So that's why whatever you acquire or you get in this life that will deprive you of eternity, you should be able to say, let the power of God and the spirit of God destroy that in you. Today in the gospel, Christ is also solidifying the message, both from the first reading and the second reading. Our destiny is in our hands. The seed of the gospel has been sowed in you and in me. Some fell along the path, and the best of the egg came and ate them up. Some on the thorny soil, they grew and couldn't get deeper roots, and the, 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 the crops withered away. Some fell on a fertile, rich soil, and they produced 130, 50, as the case may be. 
So that seed has been sowed in us. It is left for you to water it, to nurture it, in order that you to be able to bear fruit, fruit that endures unto eternity. I repeat, whatever you are asking of God in this life that will deprive you eternal life, you better tell God, do away with that intention of mine. As a Catholic priest, I have ministered here for close to more than 17 years. And it is only once that somebody approached me at the Jubilee Hall with a single intention that I pray that he acquires the necessary grace that will help him to live a happy life and attain salvation. Only once. But you could imagine how many intentions somebody or people requested from us for 17 years. Only one person knew that what really counts is eternity. For the grace to live life and attain heaven on the last day. So that seed has been sown in us. Is it bearing fruit in you? You are the only person to answer that question. If it is not bearing fruit, today can be a day of salvation. If you read Isaiah 25, he says, Come to the mountain where God is preparing a rich meal for everyone, for all peoples. So you must be able to climb that mountain in order to partake in that meal. And for you to be able to climb the mountain, you must amass energy, strength for yourself to be able to walk, to have the tenacity, to withstand the ordeal that might face you while you climb the mountain. It's not an easy meal, and it's not meant for everybody. It is only for those who can be able to surmount their difficulties, their challenges in life, that will be able to climb up there and partake of that meal. It is meant for everybody, and the seed has been sowed in us. It is left for you to determine the course of action you want to take. If you decide to deprive yourself of whatever that might deprive you of eternity. Walk towards achieving that goal. But if you want to be lazy in your spiritual life, if you want to not to yield any fruit, that like that like the, the steward who went and hid the talent given to him on the soil and said, I know my, my master is a hardliner. It depends on the way you use your talents. Use it well for the glory of God and you will see that as Isaiah is forecasting of a day when these people will be vindicated and they resettled in the Holy Land. Similarly, wherever you depart from this age, God will be able to accept you in heaven. Now, all I, all I have said in homiletics, it is against procedure or principle to make mention of names. Ideally, you give holy, homily anonymously without mentioning them, lest it be interpreted negatively in a way that might jeopardize what eventually will come to be a symbol, a beacon of light for the nations. Now, all I have said have been concretized here. This is just, this center started just like a mustard seed, which God planted in this part of the world years back, with intention to achieve whatever Isaiah, St. Paul, and the gospel of today is telling us, which means perseverance trying to mold people so that they persevere in their faith. Such that if you are coming here asking God for a life partner, for children, for money, name them. They are things temporal. They will not take you to heaven if you don't manage them well. That's why in the Gospel of John, John describes those things as signs. Signs are things that lead people to the appropriate place. They are not ending themselves. They are meant to help you to live a happy life. That's why anytime Christ heals somebody, 
you see that person will continue following Christ all the days of his or her life. So the aim is to equip you for eternity. It's not meant to help you relax as if to say you have attained your salvation. Having said that, I wish to observe that yesterday, God has instituted this place for a special purpose. And that purpose is to make sure that he shows us signs that he is still with us. So that we are able to key into that and be able to worship God the way we ought to worship God. So that after our life here on earth, we shall be worthy to be with him in heaven. That is the ultimate goal. So if your primary and the ultimate goal of coming to this place is just to get a material help and devoid of any connection with heaven, I'm sorry, you are missing the mark. Yesterday, two persons gave us testimony when we were celebrating mass in the morning, which I would like to share with you. The first person said that he has been trading and he was doing well. And when he was doing well, he was progressing his business. But suddenly, he has lived with his, his wife for so many years. And when he started, he discovered he was selling, but he wasn't seeing any money. Now he started asking questions. And people started telling him that the cause of your problem is your wife. One thing that man said yesterday that caught my attention was he said he never believed them because he knew he had lived with this woman for years. How come at this dying minute now the wife will be the person causing his problem? When he said that, people advised him to come to the pilgrimage center here. Like I said, like a mustard seed planted by God on this soil. And God has used it in various ways to help people. He came with that faith that I will get solution to my problem here. And when he came, he said his prayers, visited the Marian shrine, the chapel, and went back. He said when he went back and started, didn't continue with his business, the reverse became the case. Remember, if he had said, yes, what people told me is correct, Satan would have sowed the seed of discord between him and the wife. But he neglected that, and because of that, he came here, said the prayers, went back, and God turned the whole thing around. And lo and behold, he started progressing, and the money started flowing. Not only that the money was flowing, those whom he used to buy goods from on credit, now we are the people coming to him to buy goods on credit. A child of God, if you believe that, I know you can also share in that kind of God's intervention. The second person said, something happened and people forecasted to him that he has to buy a lamp so that they will take him to a place where they will do all sorts of things for him so that he will progress. He said, no, he wasn't going to buy a ram to go to Odibia. So he was steadfast. He maintained his faith. He knew it was wrong to go to Dibia. And he maintained his faith in God. And when he sticked his neck, he said eventually, when they persuaded him so much, he bought the lamb actually. But instead of going to Dibia with it, he bought the lamb here. Deposited it here, said his prayers, and went back home. When he went back home, those problems for which people would have misled him into going to DBS and doing things, awful things, God turned them around for his own good. I don't know why you are here if you are a pilgrim. It could be that you have a similar problem. But yes, God is telling us this morning that if you maintain your faith in him, if you are steadfast in living your faith, all those who come here and testify of what God has done for them, you will also testify that future generation will glorify God. Ultimately, our aim is to go to heaven. The Lord be with you.